I have just had the experience today where I am reminded of how ADHD traits affect friendship. Let's talk about it. Hi friends, I'm Caroline McGuire and I am here to talk about all things friendship and ADHD. Even making this video, I started filming before counting how many traits and then I was going to say and what I was gonna say. Yeah, the struggle is real. We all have ADHD traits and I wanna make a distinction here. We have traits, we also have our strengths, we also have our personalities and all these things make up our authentic self. All our ADHD traits are driven by our neurology, our brains, and the management system of the brain called executive function. And remember, as a kid or even into adulthood, many of us did not receive help. So as we approach friendship, it was without help, without strategies that considered our neurology and using traditional strategies that just, they don't work for us. And often people just tell us to be different, to read the room, to think before you speak. And I'm like, yeah, I know that. If I could do that, I would do that. Before I get into it, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, click all the things and comment and let me know what else you need and your thoughts about this. Here are the ADHD traits that affect friendship. One, boredom. It is a fact that we get bored and when we get bored, it affects how we feel about a social environment. ADHD is a deficit of interest and therefore when we are bored, it's hard to make chit chat, maintain a conversation, listen, be present, go places that don't interest us. Boredom affects us also because there are things that don't sparkle. We lose interest in people and we may chase friendships that are not healthy because they are exciting and they give us a rush of dopamine. Two, hyper-focus. We may hyper-focus on our emotions, a special interest. We may hyper-focus and forget <laughs> to show up because we're down a deep rabbit hole. I would never do that. I have never just gone on YouTube and been there for hours. Of course not. And at times, hyperfocus means we cross from interested to kind of obsessed. Three, managing emotions. Modulating emotions, conflict resolution, needing friends to kind of help us and constantly talk about our emotional travails and always needing friends to help us handle situations. Those are real things with ADHD, partly because we were never really taught how to manage our emotions and they feel just so giant to us. Responding to people when they are in an emotional moment and realizing what's happening for you and being outside of your body and understanding that they're having an emotional moment and we're having an emotional moment is a real thing in friendship. Sometimes when we're so in our emotions and we're ruminating and we're thinking about things, we can come off as inconsiderate because we don't even really realize what's going on around us. Four, impulsivity. We say stuff, we do things because of impulsivity. We may rush impulsively into friendship because we love the feeling or we are so caught up in the moment. Sticking to the topic at hand is like legit hard at times because you have all these tabs open in your brain and you're thinking of all these things and then you can impulsively wanna say something and it comes out wrong. Five, paying attention. This affects listening, being present, paying attention to social cues, monitoring the situation, like what's going on here, really? Hmm. Out of sight, out of mind can kind of go back to attention because we're forgetting, which is our memory, but we're also kind of not paying attention to how much time has gone by and we're not aware that we've kind of gone into our own little cocoon, we've forgotten about someone, and therefore we are keeping up the friendship. Number six, self-regulation. Self-regulation means we can be impatient with people. Yeah, I am. Maybe invade people's personal space because we're dysregulated, we're excited, we're exuberant, or maybe we don't even notice what's going on, so we're all in your space. Sometimes I kind of shut down and I'm like no longer fit for human consumption. And then I might disappear and do what I call an Irish goodbye. And that means I leave without ever saying goodbye because I'm dysregulated and I feel like I'm losing it and I can't 
be with people anymore. And self-regulation affects how we communicate as well because it's really hard for us to hit the pause button which is important at times when you're having an interpersonal relationship and there's things you wanna hold back or things you might wanna think about or even saying yes. <laughs> Seven, self-monitoring. This is important because violating people's boundaries, being really loud, understanding the social dynamics that are going on and reading the room partly requires you to kind of be aware of who you are and what you're doing. And a big impact here is perspective taking, which could go into many different categories, but I'm putting it here, meaning stepping into someone's shoes, considering their feelings, pausing to understand the situation. All of this is tough because we're not necessarily self-monitoring and really being aware of what's happening in the situation. Eight, poor memory. There's many different kinds of memory, but I'm just gonna chalk this all up to memory. <laughs> not remembering things that happened, not remembering conversations, conversations, what did you say, what did I say, not realizing what time it is so you can show up, keeping up with people and remembering to text them back. All these things really affect friendship because we're not necessarily remembering some of the key just steps involved with keeping up friendships. And then there's the remembering the names thing, which we just can't do. And then it's very hard to keep up with people because I don't remember their name. Oh, and sometimes I don't remember where I put them in my phone. It's tough. Nine, organization. You have to organize your thoughts for a conversation to take place and for you to be semi-coherent in a conversation and organize meetings to see people. And this does not always happen. You have to process information in your brain and that's affected by organization because as Dr. Tom Brown says, Often it goes into our Google search and then we can't pull it up again. And that I feel is so true. Like I take the information in and then I don't, I, I don't know where it goes, but when I go to call it up in my internal Google search, it is not there or it is not there the way I think it should be there. Does this cover everything? Anything I forgot? I think, <laughs> I think I got everything with my memory. We may not have had enough friendships or models to really fully know how the social game works. And so I think it's important to start from the beginning and to realize that we have these gaps. They're not our fault. We also maybe were not given all the tools to feel good about ourselves. And we've heard a lot of negative messages. So a lot of my videos are gonna be about how do we move forward from there because we're fabulous and we deserve wonderful friends. Thank you to everyone who stayed till the end. I am gonna be making many more videos about how to make friends and really focusing on the how-to aspect of things. And let me know in the comments how you're using these different strategies and what ADHD traits affect you and how does it affect you? Bye-bye friends.